Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. More on them later. We got this house a year and a half ago and I have a lot to say about it. <laughs> a lot of feelings, which I will share later in this video. I've been focusing on making this house feel more cozy and more homey and more Hannah, to be honest. It just occurred to me that I should take you along for the ride here on this channel, this whole experience of styling our house. I've been doing mostly thrifting and antiquing and finding vintage for styling this home, which makes the whole experience that much more fun and personal. And I get that my style probably isn't everyone's jam and that's okay. I've just been so inspired lately to just like go for it in terms of color and art and linens and really anything that attracts me, even if it doesn't really make sense. I want to stop overthinking how something is supposed to look and what is currently trendy or whatever and just sort of follow my heart. <laughs> and hopefully this video and more in the future can inspire you to have more fun styling your own space using second hand and pass down items to really make it your own. For me, my home is about so much more than where I lay my head and break my bread. <laughs> I recognized somewhat recently, probably back in 2019 when we first bought our first house, that the way my house looks and feels is actually very important to me. Back in the day, it felt kind of icky and frivolous and shallow to spend too much time and money and brain space on styling and decorating and filling my house and walls with art and furniture that speak to me, but now, I realized it's actually so meaningful and it really matters because I'm in my home so much of my day and the way my surroundings look actually makes me feel one way or another and the way I feel in turn supports my mood and then also the way I behave and even how at peace I am and how I regulate my emotions as a mother and also just generally feeling inspired throughout my day as a homemaker and content creator. I don't know, when I was younger, I put so little time and energy into styling and it felt dumb to care about such things, especially because they didn't seem to support me being productive in my life. And I used to be so addicted to being productive, but now I really care about how things look, especially in my home. And I've given myself permission to care. I don't know if anyone can relate to that kind of strange complex that I have. <laughs> I wanna fill my home with treasures and beauty and interesting things and curious things and since we moved from an 800 square foot house to one that is over 1900 square feet it really is taking some time to fill it up with things that make me feel inspired and one of my favorite places to find treasures is the antique mall here in Boise, Idaho. Oh I love going to the antique mall. It is so much fun. I literally had to set a timer. <laughs> so I had to leave when the timer went off because it's so addicting. You could just keep searching and searching and finding treasures. It's overwhelming how much stuff is in there. And yeah, I definitely could have been there for a couple more hours, but I have a life that I must get back to. <laughs> so I'm just gonna show you what I got today. Um, let's start with the artwork. I have no idea where this stuff is gonna go, but we will find a spot. I found a beautiful painting of these lemons signed by the artist. This will probably go in the kitchen. I have a, a bat drawing. Eric and I really like bats. It's kind of like a, a thing that we got into a couple years ago. Our love of bats has not extended very far, but maybe this can be the start. <laughs> it started when we discovered that the um, that bats make up a quarter of the world's mammals. Isn't that crazy? And then some papillons, just because they're beautiful. I think it's perfect. I don't know where it's gonna go, but I love it. And then I found these beautiful kantha blankets that are so soft. So kantha is a particular stitching style. Um, I think it started in Bangladesh. And you're like stitching these different vintage fabrics together and these are so cool looking. And here's this one. One of these will probably go in Cosmo's room. I don't know what I'm gonna do with these. I might hang some on the walls. I'm, I think I wanna hang one on the wall. One might go on a couch or on Cosmo's room as a blanket. I'm really not sure, but they're very soft. They stink like detergent right now. 
I hate the smell of fragrance detergent. I always use unscented. I cannot stand it. So the best way to get it out is to hang it in the sunshine for like 48 hours and then do like a nice good wash with your unscented stuff. I like branch basics. There are clothes at the antique mall and I can't help myself. <laughs> I found this vintage sweater. I'm going to the mountains tomorrow with my family and another family and I think this will be nice and cozy. Think like that? <laughs> I don't know. I was originally envisioning like a bigger painting there, but I like the smaller paintings mm -hmm. better. Is there a third one we could put there? There's the bats. <laughs> Okay, one thing I forgot to tell you is that I also got this apron. <laughs> I just, aprons are the epitome of coziness and cuteness. I have plans. Not necessarily to wear it, but I want to hang it up somewhere. So let's talk about this house. <laughs> I haven't really talked a lot about our move in terms of like our house that we chose. Mostly because I have such feelings about it <laughs> and it's been, I don't know, something hard to process when you buy a home and you're like, ooh, uh, there's this and this and this. It's kind of kind of hard. And the biggest reason, honestly, is like I feel, sound like a freaking princess. Like, and I'm so aware of how spoiled I sound and I hate coming off that way. So anyway, I, 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 I love our house and I'm so grateful for it. So we bought this house sight unseen. I did not see the house until we got the keys. Like in person, I saw photos obviously. And when we were purchasing, uh, the market was insane. It was just like, so like, it was just very expensive here in Boise, like way more expensive than it used to be, but definitely more affordable than California prices, which is where we came from. So let me just sum up, let me sum up how I'm feeling. So the house that we left in California. We sold it uh, last year. It was like my dream house. I can't even explain it because you look at it, you're like, that's your, that's your dream house. <laughs> but it was, it was just so small and cute and old and had this sweet little yard and it was everything I needed. Yes, we put a lot of work into it and a lot of money into it. Not necessarily changing much, but more just necessary upkeep um for example replace or like putting new flooring on top of the old flooring that was there we redid all the tile in the kitchen fixed a, a roof leak that was a huge headache <laughs> there was plumbing issues it was a 1927 spanish style house and it was so cute had this adorable yellow kitchen the kitchen was like me it was like my favorite <laughs> It just represented who i am and um we had this cute little fridge in there which we left, Ugh. biggest regret of my life, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> biggest regret of my life is not taking that stupid fridge with us. Like I love that fridge and we left it because it didn't fit into our pod and it would have been a big headache to, anyway. So we moved here to Boise, Idaho and I love it here. Like it's been over a year and I keep saying to Eric like, wow, I'm so glad we live here. It's just, we have a better quality of life, slower pace. We do more family things together. I'm in nature all the time and just like so many things. The community here is really, really great. We have some really wonderful people in our lives. Obviously we miss our friends and family back home so much. We wish they could move here. <laughs> in a nutshell, we bought this mid-century home and I realized I'm not actually a mid-century lover. It's not my jam. It's very masculine. It's very cold and there's all these straight lines <laughs> and I don't know it's just 
Mad Men style. I understand the appeal and I get why people like it, but it is not the kind of vibe that I want to walk into. And it's really sad that I had to learn the hard way <laughs> because, I, don't know, I mean, look, this is Eric's dream house. He's so happy with this house. And we've had many conversations about it where he's like, Hannah, what? And I'm like, I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm also, I also changed my mind a lot. And that is, um, just kind of who I am and I've had to come to terms with it and accept it. Sorry, you can hear <laughs> chugging milk. You're hungry. There are a lot of things I really love about this house. I like that it has this really long driveway it's that um, it feels really safe with the kids. Like it's not very far, it's not very close to the street, it's very far from the street and it has a massive yard. It's like a really nice size lot and it's, unusual to have this size of a lot in this neighborhood and we love this neighborhood it's so beautiful winding streets big mature trees close to the river love it i love that i have so much space to garden we planted six fruit trees i have uh five garden beds now um yeah so the outdoor space is really heavenly we have all these mature trees on the property and it's beautiful we even have like a little hill in the back um, which is like perfect for a mini sled session in the snow. So it's pretty awesome. And the inside of the house before we bought it was recently remodeled. And there, the, the one thing I really love about the remodel is it opened up the space to be like an open floor plan, which I don't necessarily need an open floor plan. My vibe is old English cottage. Oh, there's that weird eccentric artist lady that lives in that cottage over there oh, look at all the flowers in her garden and you walk in and you're like what is this weird house like I like houses that feel kind of old and ladylike <laughs> and um, yeah I'm just I definitely have a more feminine soul I don't have a very masculine um, energy I'm I'm a, I'm a girly girl not girly girl I'm a girly lady yeah I'm not girly girl, I'm girly lady. I'm a lady lady, I'm womanly, I'm feminine. I have masculine in me as well, as we all do. We all have both energies, but I just don't like the masculine vibe. The thing is, the house that I love <laughs> doesn't really exist here. Like I've looked, the, the, the 1927 Spanish style does not really exist. There's like five <laughs> existing houses here. And anyway, with the remodel, they opened up the space which is really great for entertaining. And so there's this big old kitchen with an island in the middle and I can stand there washing dishes and chopping vegetables while we have people over and I'm not like isolated in the kitchen, which is really great. But <laughs> the kitchen that they chose to put here is just, I didn't realize how awful it was <laughs> until like I saw it in person. I was like, oh, the kitchen does not fit the style of the house like this style is like a mid-century house like look at this like cool brick thing behind me which again not necessarily Hannah <laughs> but it's cool and it's unique and it's old and the um, the kitchen is so 2010 <laughs> yeah they just chose this kitchen with like shaker style cabinets and there's navy everywhere it's just it's literally like the kitchen cabinets, every single door inside except the front door, the bathroom cabinets. I would have loved like the original kitchen and worked with that personally. Yeah, it's just, it's not old. <laughs> I just really like old things. Again, I want to reiterate, I am grateful. I am so grateful for what I have. And it's a very functional kitchen. Like my last kitchen in my old Spanish style house was not very functional. Like it was awkward because like it wasn't built when um, fridges existed so it's like awkward spacing and the drawers were really hard to pull out and um, it was just old and not not super functional but I would take that over this kitchen maybe I'll put up some photos of like what my dream type of kitchen is like I'm like really inspired by these kinds of kitchens yeah so I don't know if we're gonna spend the money to it just feels wasteful to like take out this brand new kitchen uh, it just is so I feel like this <laughs> The remodel was so not um, thought out. Like it wasn't done with a designer, I think. I don't know, it was just very boring. <laughs> it's just boring. So all that said, the kitchens and the bathrooms are essentially what I don't like about this house. Um, and there are 
things that we can do to make it feel better. And right now we're we're um, uh, quirkifying, <laughs> cutifying through uh, art and furniture and color and um, things like that to the house. I don't know what our plans are for the kitchen yet. We talk about redoing it, but it just feels like a lot of time, a lot of money and wasteful. And also like, how do you make something look old that's like brand new? Like how do I redo it to make it look like my dream, like if we're gonna redo it, it should be what we love. And by the way, the reason I'm like picky about the kitchen is because I cook a lot and I film in the kitchen a lot. And this thing I do on YouTube and Instagram where I'm filming all the time, it represents who I am. And this kitchen doesn't represent who I am. And by the way, filming is like very cold lighting. And um, we actually added a skylight because there was so little natural light in the house. That was another thing that was a big surprise. I was like, oh my gosh, there's like no light in here. How am I gonna film anything? <laughs> um, so the skylight was really a game changer. And um, anyway, I don't know what we're gonna do. Maybe I'll get a yellow kitchen again. That's, uh, that's old looking. <laughs> But I can talk to you about what I have done or what we have done in the house to um, make Hannah feel like it's more Hannah because that's kind of what we're doing. And Eric is so sweet to like care about this project with me. He's like, let's style the house so that you love it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so, I don't know, maybe it's a nice blend that like this is Eric's dream house, but Hannah gets to make a lot of decisions about um, how we style it. Obviously, it's not like only up to me. Eric gets approval, obviously. The big thing that Eric did was add the bookcase and he builds me a bookcase everywhere we move and I just love having my books on display and they just look really beautiful. I feel like adding a big bookcase is one of the best ways to just add so much warmth to the house and I just want a warm, cozy feeling house and this house without all the stuff I'm doing is so cold. It's just a cold masculine house and so I would love like more femininity and warmth and the bookcase for me adds so much of that and there's just so much blank space on the walls so I will, I'm gonna show some pictures here, here of like inspiration I've had lately of uh, people on Instagram of just like filling their houses. Like the minimalist vibe is not my vibe anymore. I want like so much art on the walls. I want it to feel like, whoa, what's going on in here? <laughs> like a little overwhelming. And by the way, we went from an 800 square foot house to a 1900 square foot house, I think is what it is. And so that's quite a big jump. And there's, we had to, you know, get a lot of furniture and a lot of things that, um, we just, yeah, we just had to fill the space um, to make it functional and not feel so empty. And one of the big things is like wall space, as well as there's two living spaces in this house, which I originally thought was kind of cool, but now, I don't know. Seems, a little, seems like a little too much. <laughs> it seems like a little like excessive. And like I'm paying for this square footage where, why do I need two living spaces? In the winter, it's kind of nice having like two separate spaces because we're all inside. And most of my focus right now in um, Hannifying the house, is, is that what we're gonna call it? Styling the house, um, is in the front end, not in the bedrooms, just because that's where I am most of the time. We're not in the bedrooms very often, although I love styling Cosmo's room and it'll soon um, be, well, it'll be Woody's room too one day when he's not sleeping in our room. And so the kids' room. And I just love styling kids' rooms. It's so fun and whimsical. I feel like I, there's no permission needed and I can just get as wacky and um, colorful as I want. So maybe I'll take you room by room. I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know how to do these videos because it's so not done. Like it's gonna take me years to finish, to be honest. It's gonna take a very long time. And you know, if you're a homeowner, or even, I mean, if you're renting too, like just styling your home, like it takes a really, it's never done. Right? You're just always sort of adding to it. At least that's how I am. When I buy things impulsively, I'm unhappy. There's three things we purchased quickly because we sort of had to um, and I am unhappy with it. And that is the dining room table. Well, the chairs also. Like I wanna change the whole dining area. And the green couch in the den, the TV room and the rug under the green couch. Well, the dining table was like at an outlet store but they're all purchased new and I just like, um, don't like them. Like I just want to change them. And I have plans, I have ideas. Eric told me he will build me a dining table. And I said, yes, that sounds wonderful. When will you do this? <laughs> because he works a full-time job that's 
you know, sometimes he puts in more than 40 hours. It's, he's very busy at work and he's a father and um, I need his help as much as possible because <laughs> I work too. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tell you about this room right now. This is the living room and I'm gonna try to make my baby happy. <laughs> yeah, are you happy? You stay right there. Oh, he's getting so big and chunky. First things first, let's talk about, there's lots of things to talk about. The painting on the wall, the weird wacky one with all the faces. My sister got that on Craigslist like over a decade ago, like a really long time ago, and I took it from her and I can't get rid of it. I just think it's weird and cool and um, you could look at it for hours. It's kind of a conversation piece and it's totally a masculine vibe. I recognize that. I don't only want like flowers. It's hard to describe when you're describing your own style. Like it's, I don't know, I just like it. I know it's, just let me have it. <laughs> and then let's talk about this chair. Um, Eric and I actually made this cushion because this was a chair my mom got at a garage sale years ago and she gave it to us. She's like, it was $5. She's like, you want it? And I'm like, sure, but it had no cushion. And it just had a piece of plywood as the seat for a long time. We kept talking about like, what are we gonna do? Like, how are we gonna make a cushion? And we're not like terribly crafty people. So I want to be, I have a friend here and I call her the coolest lady in Idaho. Her name's Gabe. She's so cool and she like, can do anything and she knows everything. And she was over and I was like, what do I do about this chair? She's like, easy. You get a piece of foam, you get some fabric, you put it around and you staple it. I was like, I can do that. And we did that and it was so easy and voila, it's a cushion. It's not like totally perfect, but it works. And I got to choose the fabric, which was fun. This lamp was Eric's grandfather's. Um, Eric's grandpa was a designer in the 60s. So he had this amazing house like that felt like it was frozen in time and it was very designed 60s, 70s style. It was so cool. Anyway, this is something he inherited from him. The lampshade got, the lampshade got broken in the move and it was really sad. We have had it displayed proudly with the broken lampshade. Um, yeah, I don't know. We need to get a new lampshade. We'll do that soon. That'll be on my new list, my list of to-dos. This couch is a room and board couch, um, but we got it secondhand a long time ago, and it came with us from apartment to my parents' house to our California home to here, and this is the first home it actually fits in, because <laughs> it's really long, and, um, it's so comfortable. It doesn't look like much, but it's it's really comfortable couch. It's my favorite kind of couch comfort wise. And um, yeah, it's so funny because every other place we've been in that the couch has been in, it's it's the couch has been way too big for the space. Um, let's see. Oh, by the way, the pink marble table underneath the blue lamp that w was also Eric's grandpa's. It's a really cool table. I got this round um, coffee table on Craigslist forever ago and this has traveled with us. These pink chairs are from Joybird and that was our only Black Friday purchase last year and it was a great purchase. We saved a lot of money on them and they look great in this space and they're actually surprisingly comfortable. This is probably my favorite room to sit in and hang out in. That little um, guitar pick end table is from the Antique Mall. This rug I got I think on Rugs USA or Wayfair, I can't remember and that like random shelf thing was part of the old bookcase from the first bookcase Eric made me in our very first apartment. And we got a palm there and a blue pot. There's Paris poster also from the antique mall. Those yellow curtains are from Target. And we got that sideboard with the record player and speakers um, that holds all of Eric's records from just like a mid-century seller here. The pink lamp is from the antique mall. And I really want to get a piano where my desk is right now. We are going to watercolor. Oh, can you go get the picture that we're gonna replace? Yeah. Yeah, go get it. It's on top of the red cabinet. I'm gonna show them. I have a little collage wall on, um, we call it the den in like the TV room. And we are going to add something there. I really want to watercolor something to put in this frame to add to our collage wall. I'm no artist. <laughs> I'm not, this is like something I've been, I, I told myself, or I have been told, you know, like ever since I was a kid, like I'm not good at visual art. Like I'm not good at, I don't have good penmanship. I can't cut in a straight line. I'm not good at crafts. 
and if you follow me on Instagram I was posting on my stories like me trying to be a little bit of more of a craft mom and, and doing more crafty things and so this is one of my crafty things I bought is watercolor with my toddler and so we're gonna try to um, try to watercolor some stuff today you got it here let me show the camera <laughs> thank you I got this at the thrift store and this is just like a picture from a magazine or something so we're gonna take this picture out and put a watercolor inside and it doesn't have a hook so I will have to somehow figure out how to hang this up all right you ready to paint I'm gonna do this okay which which brush do you want in my house. I don't know. Oh, I ruined it. It was so cute. I ruined it. <laughs> right? I ruined it. It's gone. Not cute anymore. Oh wait. It's kind of cute. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think, Mo? Do you like it? See the pillows on the dining table? Yeah. Can you go get them? Yeah. Pillows. Do you like it like this or like this? Oh, that one right there. Okay. Oh, oh like in the middle? It's recording. These are our new pillows. Are we happy with them? Let me see. I'm gonna do it. Frame it so the pillows are in there. Yeah. I'm doing it myself. Ready? Yeah. Come on, let's go. I think the butterfly one should go right here. And maybe and this one and go below me. But that's so low, no one will be able to see it. If you put it like this, people will be able to see it. Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is my favorite website building platform because it's easy to use and they have the most beautiful customizable templates. They have a design system called Fluid Engine, which makes it easier than ever for anyone to unlock their creativity to make a space on the internet all their own. I have built several websites on Squarespace and I can honestly say their drag and drop technology plus their incredible customer support have made it so simple and I recommend it to everyone. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Hannah McNeely to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Is it skipping? <laughs> 